Hi, uh, students, how are you? Uh, today's uh, class, uh, we are going to learn about a chapter that focuses on a microbial technology, uh, biotechnology. So, um, microbes which include uh, bacteria uh, or you know yeast, some fungus such as the fungus that produces um, you know penicillin. So those um, penicillin is a powerful antibiotic. So any uh, these microbes uh, they serve as a source of various uh, molecules that has and uh, molecules that can impact human health. And some of these um, some of these products are such as you know such as you know, um, insulin. Uh, insulin can be derived from uh, bacteria, recombinant insulin. Then various immunological cytokines like interferon alpha, or uh, let's say stem cell factor, platelet derived growth factor, uh, platelet derived growth factors. They can be engineered as a recombinant protein and then could be expressed in bacteria or on yeast and then these products could be you know, um, harvested and can be commercialized or non-commercialized, but the goal is to help the human uh, civilization, human society. And uh, the basic principle uh, for uh, generating this recombinant protein, we have discussed in various contexts that is, so let's say if somebody wants to work on interferon alpha, or any interferon, alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, or gamma. So, and these are mainly uh, immune mediators that can fight infections, including virus infections. So if we want to produce M, uh, interferon at an industrial scale, then we can, what we could do is that we could uh, take a, take a, the, the gene for interferon from human DNA or human chromosomes, and then we can amplify. So one of the ways could be that we can, we can isolate human leukocytes from the blood and then, um, then extract mRNA, convert this mRNA into cDNA by which enzyme? That enzyme is called as reverse transcriptase. Uh, which virus produces? This is a family of virus called as lentivirus. And one of the, those viruses is uh, HIV. And these cDNA can be cloned into a regular plasmid called as PBR322. Uh, remember that plasmid is always written by a small p, not big p. And these plasmid can be transformed into E. coli that you must have done in your, uh, you might have done in your molecular biology lab uh, using calcium chloride and heat shock treatment. The E. coli can have this plasmid and then all these plasmids can be grown and can be confirmed for producing interferon activity in various biological assays. So the starting point could be human mRNA to get the protein. In addition, you know, these microbes have been uh, used to produce uh, vaccines, for example, polio vaccines. Uh, there has been no cases or very minimal cases after 2002, similarly diphtheria and various others. So these vaccines are also uh, produced by these uh, uh, microbial uh, organisms by genetic manipulation. This is a list of uh, various pathogens uh, that can that can uh, uh, that that are that can infect human beings, and uh, vaccines are being worked upon. So, uh, what is a vaccine? So, a vaccine is an agent that tries to uh, boost our immune system. So, how does it boost our immune system? So. Uh, when uh, when uh, we take uh, vaccines, 
So these vaccines could be injected. It could be injected by mouth. If polio vaccines are given by mouth, it could be um, intramuscular. Uh, COVID vaccines, COVID vaccines, Moderna or Pfizer. And uh, so these vaccines are delivered through various route. And what are these vaccines? These vaccines are uh, parts of the pathogen. Pathogen is an organism that can cause disease. Uh, uh, parts of pathogen that that you know that lead, that leads uh, the disease process. Disease process. What do I mean? That if there is a bacteria or if it is a virus, the whole bacterial protein may not be causing uh, inflammation or a disease initiation in, in, in our body. But there could be specific proteins, specific amino acid in a specific protein that contributes to the pathogenesis. So when the vaccine is administered, the, the main goal is that, that it generates memory B cells. Memory B cells. Uh, B cells are those lymphocytes that generate um, antibodies. Right? And these antibodies are those agents that can fight uh, infection. So while anti B cells are there to make antibodies, there are a subset of B cells called as memory B cells that stay as silent in our body, maybe in lymph nodes. And whenever our body again faces a pathogen, then there is an immune response. So the vaccines serves as a memory, memory cells that could be revigorated for production of anti antibodies to fight infection. So that's a vaccine. Now these um, nowadays there are various routes to develop vaccines. And that has gone through a process of development and, and uh, innovation, and that's based upon the research. So let's say, for example, this is a virus, right? This is a virus. This virus has a surface, a membrane, right? This virus has a membrane. And within this membrane, if you see there, there are three types of proteins. So these are called as, so outer covering of a virus could be called as envelope or membrane. And they are mainly lipoproteinaceous structure, lipids and proteins, just like cell membrane of human cells. And there are some proteins which are called as envelope proteins. These envelope proteins, they play a crucial role in, in attacking the human cells. So these envelope proteins go attract, go and attach themselves to the human cellular receptor, and then facilitates the enter of this entry of this virus into human cells. Now this virus also within this uh, envelope protein there is a capsid protein, and within the capsid protein is virus genetic material. It could be DNA or RNA. So. The point I was making earlier is that whole virus may not be responsible for causing disease, but there must be one or two proteins that must be extremely critical for this for as spike protein in in COVID-19 or a GP120 in human uh, in HIV. So the characterizations of these envelope proteins, which one of them is most important in attacking the human immune cells? Because if we can combat those protein, those protein or identify that protein, that is very crucial to, to initiate and, and, and cause disease and, and you know, inflammation and so on and so forth. So identification of the most important protein that can be used to block, block what? Block its activity such that it doesn't Devastates, devastate human cells. 
how does this takes takes place so so these are very simple um, strategies that we can take mice and we can have two groups of mice one is not protected unprotected and one is protected so there can be a herpes simplex virus herpes simplex, the genes of herpes simplex virus can be can be cloned now which gene the envelope gene envelope protein gene what is that gd protein and this gd protein is is expressed in cho cells these are special cells that can secrete gd protein so these secreted gd proteins are harvested and then injected into mice so two groups of mice before and after two groups of mice one is unprotected and one is protected protected with what the gd vaccine and when this mice mice are infected with gd vaccine then the non protected mice die but this is protected why this is protected because this vaccine prepared this mice how did it prepare it rejuvenated the immune cells that created immune cells that would target the virus if it enters okay so the job of vaccine is to boost the immune system one of the mechanism by which it boost the immune system is by creating the special kind of lymphocytes that are called as memory b cells but there are more to it that i don't want to cover here then the next level is to recognize which which so a gd protein could be made up of 1000 amino acids these all 1000 amino acids may not be responsible to facilitate the disease process but there could be a patch of 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 amino acid sequence that we that must be most critical so let's take an example that out of this 1000 residues gd protein only a patch of 100 pro pro 100 amino acids could be most critical for for facilitating the infection so the first job was to identify the gd protein now the second job is to identify the domain that is critical for for uh, for uh, for the pathogenesis of of this virus so also after this it was recognized that this gd protein has five domains domain 1 domain 2 domain 3 domain 4 domain 5 so what did we do from whole virus we we narrowed down to envelope protein from envelope protein we focus to gd protein from gd protein to now these are the five domains within the extra cellular region of the gd protein that could be important right? so so these fragments of amino acids can be used in the protection experiment what is a protection experiment to have two groups of mice one is non protected and one is protected so if a domain is important then it will protect this mice now the disadvantage here is that these peptides may not be immunogenic enough to create b cells memory b cells so these peptides attack to carrier proteins and one of the carrier protein is called as keyhole limpet hemocyanin klh so this klh serves as a carrier protein that increases the because peptides are very small they may not be efficient in generating immunity so the the multiple peptides have been tagged to carrier protein and one of the example is KLH keyhole limpet hemocyanin that serve as a as a uh, carrier protein to boost immunity. Now, developing virus uh, whether whether uh, a vaccine works or not, but developing um, uh, developing um, a viral vaccine is easier as compared to parasites such as malaria. In malaria, mosquito uh, anopheles they can secrete their saliva with that saliva when it's sucking blood and with saliva saliva comes the, the a particular stage of par, uh, malarial parasite in the blood called as sporozoite 
these sporozoites infect the liver cells and in the liver cells they undergo further kind of differentiation and they emerge from liver cells as merozoites these merozoites they again infect rbcs and in rbc they generate gametocyte so what what i want to highlight here is that the development of the life cycle of malarial parasite is multi multiphasic from sporozoite to 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 merozoite in the liver then in the blood and then gametocytes then again taken up by the mosquito so this this because of this complex life cycle the development of malarial vaccine is very very challenging and uh, also there could be drug resistant strain but recently i read a paper that there is a vaccine that is being uh, uh, that is being tested which is almost 70% uh, efficient in in malarial uh, against malarial parasites so a vaccine could be a dna or rna vaccine right it could be live attenuated where the in the the pathogen or virus or bacteria is weakened they are weakened from the disease point of view but they can still generate immunity in humans then there could be inactivated vaccines where the pathogen is killed pathogen is killed to not cause infection but it can generate antibody the third kind of the one two third three fourth kind of vaccine is subunit vaccines that we just described uh, in earlier slides then there can be uh, viral vectors that can be uh, used to create uh, immunity so in proteins there could be subunit vaccines you know so uh, this is pretty much um, what the previous slide says in case of covid it is a nucleic acid vaccine it's mainly mrna right and um, which mrna it's the mrna that codes for spike protein so if somebody is non vaccinated then the virus will enter into our body through air and then it will go and bind to the cellular receptor in human cells through which protein spike protein so the mrna coding for spike protein can be used as a candidate and this mrna can be injected into the cells through vaccine vaccine route and this mrna can produce a spike protein this is spike protein on our human cells can generate antibodies or memory b cells to fight covid-19 so the dna or rna vaccines are proving to be more advantageous they take less time to develop uh, they are less expensive they need less expertise because working with protein is 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 very very challenging as compared to dna and rna so what are the benefits of microbial technology is to produce recombinant hormone vaccines restriction enzymes and and antibiotics now one of the unique example that i will take here to share with you which is very important is vitamin c vitamin c is very important for our body and you know that uh, many many physicians or many uh, bodies of physician recommended taking zinc or vitamin c to prevent or to to reduce the, uh, the 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 effect of covid but the most interesting part is that uh, and the chemical name of vitamin c is ascorbic acid or ascorbate now thing uh, the most important thing is that our body cannot uh, produce uh, uh, vitamin c we are dependent upon vitamin c on external sources right and uh, so the so and the chemical synthesis is done is done by bacteria so um, so the starting point for the synthesis of of uh, ascorbic acid is glucose right and during uh, one of the steps or during the last step um, it is very important that uh, there is a conversion of 2 keto l gluconic acid repeat 2 keto l glucuronic acid 2 klg to ascorbic acid 
Now, this is very critical step. Now, the problem here is that this step cannot be done in one bacteria, but it involves two, back, two, you know, two different type of bacteria. So bacteria such as Acetobacter, Glucobacter, and Irvinia herbicula can convert glucose to 2,5-DKG, right? But they cannot go further step. But further, uh, different kind of bacteria such as Cornibacteria, Bavibacterium, Arthobacter have 2,5-DKG uh, reductase that can convert 2,5-DKG to 2-LKG. That, that is a prior step before conversion to ascorbic acid, which is with vitamin C. So how to deal with this thing? So this gene, uh, 2,5 uh, DKG, was isolated from Cornibacterium, and then it was cloned. And then after being cloned and expressed and checking its activity to do this uh, reductive step, this particular gene was transformed into herbicula, uh, Irvinia herbicula. Now, this Arvinia helbricula by itself can do all the biosynthetic steps for producing the antibiotics. So um, that is basically, this is a short chapter. And I would advise you to that microbes are not only responsible for producing vaccines or antibiotics or vitamin C, but they play a very huge role in probiotics, microbiome, the gut bacteria, right? And it also helps in the generation of, of, of biofuel. So uh, please watch these videos, YouTube videos. So uh, with this, we finish this chapter on microbial biotechnology.